हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू द यूट्यूब चैनल ऑफ बीइंग एसीसीए दिस इज तुषिता गुप्ता एसीसी एफिलिएट एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर सॉल्विंग टांजा कंपनी क्वेश्चन एज यू कैन सी दिस इज अ पास पेपर क्वेश्चन व्हिच हैज बीन आस्क्ड इन मार्च जून 2022 um if you uh, you know referring to your kaplan kit this is question number 323 in your kaplan kit so this is where you will find it over there but i would highly recommend that you solve it in your uh, you know acc a practice platform this is a free resource that we have so it's good if we you know keep a utilization of this resource to better prepare ourselves for the exam so um i can see the 10 marker requirement right in front of me on the right hand side of the screen which wants me to calculate the after tax weighted average cost of capital for tanza company at 31st december 20x6 on a market value basis so i need to calculate a tax adjusted vac for this company so this is basically what the requirement is over here you can see this is for 10 marks uh let us read the scenario tanza company currently has the following sources of finance at 31st december 20x6 the capital structure and the nominal values have not changed for many years so this is the capital structure that we have there are three sources of finance that they are primarily using number one is equity which is ordinary shares then you have some convertible loan notes and then you have a bank loan so uh the nominal values are given to you over here and then uh you need, there are you know information pertaining to all of the other sources through which you can uh, arrive at the cost of the capital so without any further ado let's get started uh so as you can see there are three sources of finance which are being used over here so let's first calculate the cost of equity so for the cost of equity which is our ordinary shares uh we are simply going to use uh let's see what information is given and then we'll see what formula do we have to use is it going to be the dividend valuation or is it going to be the capm model so uh, we are seeing that the ordinary shares currently have a market price of $5.55 per share and the nominal value is uh 50 cents per share so the ordinary dividend has recently been paid directors have indicated that 90 cents will be paid in the next year tanza company's dividend and share price have grown steadily at 6% per year for several years and are expected to continue to do so so we can see clearly with the information that we have we are going to use the dividend valuation model which has given the formula as d1 divided by your uh, you know uh, market price plus the growth rate so uh, if you see d1 we are already given with because d1 is nothing but the dividend that's going to be paid next year it's clearly mentioned that the directors have indicated that a dividend of 90 cents will be paid in the next year currently it is 31st december 20x6 and 31st december 20x7 makes it d1 so 0.9 is your d1 uh let's do it with brackets so that we can add the growth rate as well and then you divide this by the p0 which is the current market price which is 5.55 and then you add the growth rate of 6% so with this uh you convert this to a percentage figure and you arrive at the cost of equity which will roughly come out to be 22.22% now let's move to the second source which is the cost of convertible loan notes so let's read what information we have pertaining to that each loan note has a nominal value of $100 and is currently trading at 108.51 on 31st december 20x9 investors holding convertible loan notes may convert the loan notes into ordinary shares Uh, so 20 is the number of ordinary shares they will get if they choose not to do so the loan notes will be redeemed at the nominal value on 31st december 20x9 so if you see uh, you know the time period basically uh, you know they are going to be redeemed uh, so if you see uh, 20x6 is what we are at today so uh, we are in this uh, you know 20x6 so then 20x7 is one year 20x8 is uh the second year 20x9 is the third year 
so this is how you have uh, it for three years time period now uh, let's do the calculations over here so uh, we know that for the convertible loan notes we need to work out the IRR so let's uh, you know mention all of the cash flows so for year zero it's a negative of the market value so 108.51 is what the market value is today so this is an outflow shown as a negative figure here and then in year one there's going to be interest that gets paid on it so uh, let's see what the rate of interest is. It is 6% and the nominal value is 100. So 6% uh, of 100 is nothing but 6. And then, um, you know, we are supposed to make it after tax. That is why I'm going to account for 1 minus tax as well. So tax rate is 15%, 1 minus 15%. So with this, uh, this is the interest that I'm going to keep getting for, uh, you know, the remainder of the years. And then in year three, uh, I will get the interest plus I will have two options, whether to get uh, converted to equity or whether to take it at the nominal value. So let's work it out on this side over here. So option one will be to have 100 which is the nominal value. And then option two, let's calculate how much 20 shares will be worth. So if you see in today's terms, uh, your share price is trading at 5.55. So three years from now, if you keep applying the growth rate at the rate of 6%, which is uh, given to you in the question uh, right over here, 6% per year for several years. So you raise it to the power of three, uh, which will give you the share price, what the share price is going to look like, um, you know, uh, three years from now. And then if you multiply this with 20, you will get the value that the shareholders get to choose from. So either you take $100 or you take $132 from the company. Obviously, any rational investor will go for the second option because the value over here is higher. So in the third year, you get the interest as well as the conversion value. So this is the cash flow that you end up making in the last year. Now simply you can use the IRR formula over here, select all of the values from year zero to year three, and then hit enter. Now over here, you have your cost of convertible loan notes with you, which is giving you an answer of 11.22%. So even if you use the interpolation method where you take out two NPVs and then you use the IRR formula, that's also totally correct. And this method is also totally correct. However, I recommend that you use this method because it saves time and reduces the chances of error. Now, the next source of finance which they are using is basically a 4% bank loan. So, this is the pre-tax cost. Now, we have, uh, you know, uh, we have to make it uh, post-tax. So, cost of bank loan, it's nothing but 4% multiplied by 1 minus tax rate, which is 15%. Now, this gives you your after-tax cost of the bank loan converted to a percentage and now you have it so the next thing that we need because it's going to be on a market value basis the next thing that we need are the market values of these sources so if i just calculate the market value of equity first i need the number of shares that they have an issue so i can see that the nominal value is 50 million and each share is worth 0.5. So basically that means I have 100 million, uh, 100 million number of shares in issue. And if I want the market value of equity, it's going to be 100 multiplied by 5.55, which is the current market price per share. So 555 million is the market value of my ordinary shares. Now, if I talk about the market value of my convertible loan notes, so again, I'm going to first need the number of loan notes. So the number of loan notes is uh, going to be nothing but the nominal value, which is 150 million. And you divide that by your, uh, you know, the nominal value per loan note, which is 100. So uh, 150 million 
divided by 100. So this is the number over here that you have or what your, uh, the number of loan notes which you have. And if you multiply that by the current market price, uh, I have worked all of the workings in millions so far. So let me do this also in millions. So 150 million, that means 1.5 million loan notes I have. And if I multiply that with the market value, so this is nothing but this that I've put over here. Uh, so my market value of the loan notes is uh, 162.765 million dollars and then market value of the lo uh, bank loan because bank loan is not traded in the market the book value itself is the market value so if you add the total of the market values then you will have the total valuation of the company so this is 837.765, which you have the total valuation of the company. Now for the VAC, we're going to do a very simple thing. Uh, we're going to go, you know, finance wise and the cost uh, that they are, uh, you know, having with us and then the market value, which they have. So I, I take two brackets over here. First, let's deal with the bank loan. So it's 3.4%, which is the cost. And then the market value is this much out of the total of this much. So this is my first portion uh, completed over here. Now then the second thing which I have is uh, the cost of my convertible loan notes. So my convertible loan notes, is, this much is the cost and then the value of my loan notes is this much and then the total is this much. So then you close these as well. And then in the last one, you have the cost as 22.22%. You multiply that with the valuation and then you divide with the total. So with this, you have completed your VAC calculation. Convert this to a percentage and then you have your answer. So this is your weighted average cost of capital on a market value basis. Now let's move ahead to the further requirements. Uh, so part B wants me to critically discuss with reference to the relevant theory, the views of director A and director B on raising new finance. And then the second part under part B itself wants me to discuss two other factors for Tanza company to consider in making the decision to whether to raise equity or debt finance. So this is where the information is going to help us with these two uh, requirements over here. So Tanza company needs to raise a further $200 million of long-term finance. And the directors have been discussing whether this should be borrowed, which that means debt, or whether there should be new share capital in the form of equity. So the finance we need quickly for the new project. During the discussion, Director A proposed the use of debt. She had heard that at high levels of gearing, the company can make cost savings, which improve the weighted average cost of capital. And then the director B has pointed out that Tanza company's capital gearing is amongst the lowest in the industry. Their competitors generally have higher gearing and also lower weighted average cost of capital. Although I do think that when gearing gets high, the weighted average cost of capital goes up again. So basically, the, the views of the directors that we uh, are given with pertain to the theories of capital structure, which we have studied. So if you see director A is talking about the m, &M theory, uh, you know, the m, m theory is something which suggests that, uh, you know, the uh, cost of capital of the company, the weighted average cost of capital of a company does not depend upon their financial structure. Rather, it depends upon the investment activities that they do, the business activities that they do. So, um, you know, they are thinking that the only way the company's capital structure will affect the VAC and therefore the value of the company is by taking more debt. So, uh, you know, the tax shield will increase and because, uh, you know, the interest on debt is tax deductible, but dividends are not. So that's why this will benefit for the company. So um, if you see, uh, you know, critically try to think about this, there will be problems that the company face, uh, that the company will face if this happens. So number one is that... Uh, the providers of debt finance, which means the banks who have given you the loan, basically they will not be ready to, uh, you know, tolerate such high levels of gearing because the more debt a company has taken, the more risk of default the company has. The higher, uh, you know, the risk will also go up that you will not be able to pay the interest as well as the principal amount.
another risk is that it's also possible that you know the, uh, this company tanza company is exhausting all of its taxable profits with deductions in interest costs so uh, you know maybe uh, all of my profit goes out as interest payments and then eventually uh, you know i am left with no tax to save so this is how uh, you know uh, this can be a problem for tanza company then if i talk about director b director b basically talks about the traditional theory where they say that there's one level which is optimum uh, level of debt for the company so um, what happens is because uh, cost of equity is higher than the cost of debt uh, debt is cheaper so if they take more debt the weighted average cost of capital will fall but you know as uh, the borrowing increases as the company's debt increases the shareholders are taking more risk because you know in the event of liquidation they come uh, at the end so if the company is taking more debt that means the risk financial risk of the company is getting increased and that is why they will demand a higher return so if they demand a higher return your cost of equity goes up and that's why the vac eventually starts to rise because the benefit that you're getting because of a cheaper debt gets outweighed by the expensive equity that you are using so uh, you know optimal level is where your vac has stopped falling but uh, you know it's not rising so that's where the optimum point is so um, the problem main problem that we face with this method is that you know there's no uh method through which you can calculate it it can only be found through trial and error method now uh moving on to the b part where the second part where they want us to discuss two other factors so uh you know one of the hints is very well provided in the question over here that they need the finance quickly so if you see if you compare between debt and equity usually debt is uh you know less time consuming raising debt takes a lot less time rather than equity because you know when it comes to raising equity there are a lot of formalities that a business has to do and with debt or uh, they are slightly lesser so uh, according to the fact that they want the money quickly they should probably go for debt then another thing which they should consider is that maybe uh you know if they have any non current assets which they can give as a collateral as a security to the lender perhaps the cost of the debt which they take now can be lowered because of giving that asset as a security so this is another factor that they can consider one more thing that they can consider is the clientele effect so basically the shareholders what kind of people are they if they are comfortable taking more debt because currently they have lesser debt than the industry so if the shareholders are okay taking more debt then uh, you know they can uh, go ahead with it but if the thing that the shareholders may uh, think of this as a problem because they may think that the risk is increased then may, they may sell off their shares which will you know lead to a fall in the market price of the share so accordingly this is also one factor which the directors will have to consider before they take a decision whether to raise equity or to raise debt so with this we have come to the end to this question i hope that this question has clear uh, you know has become clear to you if you have any queries you can drop them down in the chat box below you can also dm us on instagram at beingacca thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one